What's going on, Jim? Not much. What's We're, going on, Timmy boy? Uh, pretty good. How's things going? Anything kind of you doing these days that might be of interest for the show? Well, I'm trying to figure out how I can get my laptop to break itself so I can get a free MacBook Air. I hear that's the new thing. Yeah, it in seems this to office. be the new virus yeah. running around DTLT. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out how to get that virus. Whereas I'm happy with my computer. Are you? Yeah. Well, I don't need to kind of upgrade. Yeah. You know. You think you're better than me? I want to upgrade my mind. Not my tech. Okay. Well, if you wanted to upgrade your mind, you know there's this new MOOC, uh, the AI class. Have you heard of it? I have. I heard there's like 350,000 people signed up. Well, they've it's lowered, they've lowered their numbers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since then. They're, they're saying 145,000. Only 145,000. Just, yeah, you know, I'm, beans. I, I'm now, can we even call that massive? I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's a rule, right? Like, how massive can Is it be? that massive? So... Um, but it just started last week, and I got the email notification that it is... You're signed up for it, too, are you? Or have you even noticed? Well, you know, I did sign up for it originally, but I haven't heard... I haven't got anything after the fact, so maybe i got to go back. Yeah. I'm actually going to live vicariously through you on this one. <laughs> I am. Good to know. <laughs> You're going to let me take the brunt of the work. And well, what do I'm you want really me to share a line on your certificate? On my certificate? You know, I you? just wish hope that if the badges are open, I could borrow some of your badges. Like, I'd like to see if, like... If you get badges as a result of this class, that right. maybe I could use them. Well, I hear there might be a way that we could share the badges. So See, that's all I want. That would be good. So let me ask you seriously, though. Uh-huh. It was your first assignment, right? Right. This week? First unit. So they've first got unit. two units available, which I guess are like lectures, basically. Now, can we get a sense of how any of that works? Like, yeah. what was it like, A, to start? Mm -hmm. um, was there any social component to it? Sure. How did the actual videos run? And then what did you have to do to kind of complete the unit? Well, here, I'll pull up the um, website on here so that y'all can see it. So this is the main website after you've logged in. And, okay. of course, they're warning people. They've got announcements and updates. has a very LMS kind of look to it. it does. Ironically, you know, you've got your announcements, and uh, they're saying that they're upgrading their servers and stuff. But you've got your units along the left-hand side. Um, so there's only two available right now. But if I expand this, you can see how it breaks it up. And beside each question, each uh, section of the lecture, there are some that have question marks beside it. And those are actual like quiz questions. Uh, uh -huh. Not for credit or anything, but just sort of as you're moving along, something to see if you're understanding the concept. So do you go about reading a chapter and then watching videos and then answering quiz questions? Well, here's what's interesting. The whole thing is based around YouTube videos. So it has a very Khan Academy kind of feel to it. Sure. Every single unit. So if I go to the introduction and pop this open, there's no text-based content on here. Um, it's all YouTube videos. So welcome and these to are the two dudes. The online introduction yeah, part these of are the two people Sebastian running the course. And then if I go, you know, for example, this class at Stanford and now we're teaching it online for the entire world. Really stop excited. that. If I go to like intelligent agents and open that one up, it opens up this video. The correct answer is intelligent gotcha. agent so let's talk about intelligent agents. and this is the format that all of these videos are in which i find interesting is that they're basically for now anyway unless they decide to change things up they're recording videos from like an elmo desktop projector type thing and they're writing on pieces of paper yeah and then when you it's go to old school yeah, but when you go to the question, so what they'll do is they'll write out the question with multiple choice answers, <laughs> and then it switches over to a screenshot with the quiz overlaid on top of it. That's cool. So I you're like answering that. on top of what they wrote, and then, for example, like this answer, I'll say, and then done. Ah, and, so you just answered. And then it tells you that you got it correct. Gotcha. Um, it also tracks your progress up here, so you can see that I completed all of Unit 1, and probably nothing of unit two if we get there with our awesome wireless at Mary Washington. But you're locked in. You're not wireless. No. So that's a good question. It may be their server load. Now, I went to their website earlier today, um, and it actually said uh, that they were down for coffee. <laughs> 
and try yeah. to figure it out. So they're having some problems with server load, as I guess you would if you had 145,000 yeah. people they have to be trying to hit your site. Right so, which is another good reason, I guess, to use YouTube videos because that offloads the video component, which Absolutely. is a huge part of the bandwidth and stuff like that. But it's interesting for me. So I did the first unit, and you know, I was starting to comprehend it and stuff. Oh, here's so this yeah, finally loaded. Yeah, so this is the, your progress indicator. So they've got, you know, a bar graph telling you you did so and so much percentage of each unit, and you can see how much of it you completed and how much of it you got correct in terms of those little quizzes. So right now, what does it say? 100% completed, how many correct? Can you see 100%. that? 100%. Everything right? Yeah. Okay, so so far you're killing this. Here's, oh, and so you can see. There you go. So you can see which questions you got right and which ones you got wrong. Um, so I did not get them all right, but I went back and answered them correctly because I want to get an A. <laughs> well, let me like ask you, oh, so you went back. I, I'm, I'm particular like that. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, this is really good in terms of like, it seems at least from what I'm seeing right here, a good way of kind of modularly tracking progress right. based on here's a video, here's the quiz, take your answer. See you later, right? Yeah. Move on to part two. It's, it's not very interactive, though. And, and I don't know in terms of, like, an artificial intelligence class how you make that interactive. It may be. I know one of the biggest um, criticisms of Khan Academy was that, uh, you know, these videos are really boring. That's what I've always said. If you go and watch the videos, it's basically the same thing. The guy is basically drawing on a tablet. It's yeah. showing it up on the screen, and he's teaching you about math. And at the same time, people who defend the concept say these are rote topics that people just have to memorize. You know, they're basic yeah. mathematical concepts and formulas that there's really, you know, very little leeway in terms of making it something interactive <laughs> and awesome. We can't make it at all interesting. <laughs> I don't so know. So we've come up with a method whereby or maybe it's you know, a, we can really just you know pound it out. Or maybe it's a, a, a thing of bandwidth and how much you can handle, but I would argue on that, you know, Khan Academy has tons of money to do it now. So, you know, if they had the argument before of, look, I'm just one guy that can't do all of that, well, now he's got a ton of money behind him and he could hire someone to make compelling content. And I kind of feel it's the same thing with this. This is freaking Stanford. I mean, unless they're not really getting that kind of support from their university to build out something better, which I find it hard to believe. If, some, if we went to someone at Mary Washington and said, we've got 145,000 people interested in this course, can we get some funding behind it to do something amazing with it? I think that we wouldn't have a whole lot of problem making that argument. Yeah, and I think um, both Noyce Professor and Julia in the chat make the point, and I think it's, it's fascinating to me, why must online classes simply model, right, the most boring, you know, vapid approach. Mm -hmm. Like here's a completely, here's a complete opportunity to exploit the new medium yeah. and all it provides. And I think Khan Academy did that in a very simple way. Yeah. But then people said, this is the solution. And then he got locked into that $6 million funding later. Yeah. He's just making YouTube videos, right? Like that seems to be like the extent of it. And artificial intelligence, from what you're showing me, and now I'm, I'm kind of living vicariously through Tim. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're doing the kind of assessment piece they're doing the, like, here's what you got right and wrong, but in the most root kind of predictable way right. that it is a bit kind of, well, you know, it's, it's kind of depressing a little bit. Like, here we are. Well, and this is the nut for them to crack because the thing about it is the biggest thing with AI class was that they were going to allow anyone to take the class and get a certificate. They said that you could take the quizzes and take the exams alongside everyone else. We will grade them and we will hand them right back to you. Well, the only way to do that is really to make it some sort of automated way. So how do you make it both interactive yeah. but not have two professors grading 145,000 people's work? And so it's a huge well, nut to crack. It's a huge. The numbers for this class are insane. They I mean, are. I can't even imagine. And I definitely, I mean, I hand it to both these professors and to even the people designing for this kind of scale. It's like right. this is a huge scale. And I think immediately that has crippled them. And that is handcuff them, like because we mm -hmm. have to do this scale, and it's almost like, well, here's the most rudimentary thing, and it doesn't seem like they have much time. I don't know if three months when they announced this class, they were like, okay, we got to kind of prepare for about mm -hmm. 150,000 people, more or less. Like they were probably thinking about at most 10, yeah. you know, thousand. They, I don't even think they imagined. Now I don't know how big a jump it is from 10,000 to 150,000, because look, 
you're not going to be able to grade 10,000 or even 1,000 no. people's work. Right. No less than 150. So everything after like that mm -hmm. one critical point where you can't give any personal attention, yeah. the whole thing changes. Well, and I want to show you a picture from the profile because I was just browsing around the site and going to all the pages. And I love, I pull over to the profile, and you'll notice something really familiar awesome. along the left-hand side here, uh, which is that they've integrated badges into their system. Hmm. So... I don't know yet how that's going to play out, but it's definitely got something in there where you can get badges for your work. So I'm wondering if they're going to be, in turn, trying to submit this as a way to get funding through the um, well, digital, absolutely, digital, digital the media learning Digital program. media learning initiative is all badges. I mean, right. that's one of the real kind of cop-outs of that thing right now. But I think the funny <laughs> thing, need to get into, Noise but. Professor, um, interesting, said maybe the whole thing there aren't really any professors. It's just one big super AI. Yeah. And I like that. Now, if that was happening and this was like a Philip K. Dick-like class, yeah. right, it's definitely in the right state, Northern California, right? You, I would dig that if yeah. it turned out that this was kind of programmed by some kind of fake Philip K. Dick bot and we think we're in the class, but we're not really in the class. Yeah. We're not taking the, the class. The class is taking us. Mm -hmm. And it's using all this to kind of further reproduce. The real problem with this class, though, is if you have 145,000 people who are interested, and a small fraction of them will be dedicated, right. and you can't find a way to bring those small fraction together. Like, I was hoping, like, you would do something, right. and then there would be some way for you to link out to contact someone or say, hey, someone else did mm -hmm. something or had similar questions. Maybe talk to them about that. Like, that's what I'm really interested about some of the stuff Mike Caulfield's doing right now. Yeah. Because Mike Caulfield has this whole thing, which is basically called like video chat or ed roulette. Right. Which is basically like chat Similar roulette. Similar to chat roulette. Yeah. But after you come up with a series of questions, you can randomly connect with people. Well, and it's this idea of peer, you know, peer instruction. The idea that right. I answered one way, someone else in the class answered another way. Can we pair those two together and have a discussion? And based on that, you turn around and go back, you know, how does this answer look to you now? Maybe you change it or something like that. That's the real model of learning is that, right. especially in a course this big, how wild would it be if as soon as I answered something, it said, uh, okay, that, I'm not going to tell you whether that's right or wrong, but I am going to have you talk to this person about what you answered uh, because that person answered something different and I want you to hash it out together. Yeah, and it's true. It's, it's with less man garbage. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with chat roulette is as soon as you went on 3N, you would see someone's package. Right. But this is really a good idea because if you have somewhat of a controlled community mm -hmm. of people taking a class who are interested in even having this discussion, and you can allow them to get in there randomly to tutor each other and peer, you know, mm -hmm. I really like the idea. I mean, I didn't think I would. And it uses clickers and everything that I was kind of like, really? Yeah. But when he gave us that demonstration and showed us the possibility for a class like this, yeah. now that would be like if they had built in peer review and some sort of peer tutoring, and, or they do over the course, mm -hmm. I would be blown away because I yeah. think that would be, out of 145,000 people, say you have a few thousand that are really sticking around, mm -hmm. that would be amazing to randomly meet people who can help you with physics. Yeah, and they do point to, so there's a subreddit on reddit.com for <laughs> people taking the class, so there's that social aspect that they point people to. Uh, there's some people are using meetup.com to actually meet up in person at various um, local communities and things like that. But really within the product itself, and they have created basically a product to do this, there's no social component at all. I never interact at all with the other people taking the course, which is interesting. That's right. Another thing that we should mention, uh, that in, and there were posts about this several um, weeks ago, I think maybe, maybe even as far back as two months ago when this came out, was that there's mm -hmm. a company behind this. And I, I believe that the people that are running the course are also involved with this company. Um, their website... Yeah, no yeah, nolabs.com. No so K-N-O-W labs.com. They say that they're a Silicon Valley-based Valley startup uh, looking to change the future of education, make it more accessible and less expensive. So again, same idea as with Khan Academy. And they're touting these numbers from this course. Um, this is their first product that they're basically putting out there and saying this is a model that we're going to build something uh, that can be recreated in other spaces. And it, I should mention that Stanford is actually doing three courses with this same set of software. So there's the AI class, there's a database class, 
and there is one other that I can't remember, but there's actually three classes that all are basically modeled around the same thing. I'm not taking all three, I'm just taking the artificial intelligence class because I really did want to kind of put a full effort into it and try and understand what they were doing and not just, not just because I'm interested in the software that they're using to run it, but also because I was mildly interested in robotics and artificial intelligence. One of the things that's interesting, and back in 2009, I was at Duke talking with a bunch of people there, and one of the things that the Duke folk brought up, because I think Duke and Stanford, they consider themselves running in the same circles, mm -hmm. <coughs> they noted that Stanford had gotten rid of all, all their instructional technologists back in 2009 when the really? 2008 and 2009, one of the things they cut is their instructional technologists. And so the idea that for these MOOCs, they're going to these startup companies, which, you know, given Stanford and Google's close relationship, the whole startup culture might be different there, mm -hmm. but the fact that the first thing they're looking to is to scale this to make it profit, and it's almost like, you know, investment funds, and, you know, we'll give you X amount of money, and there'll be money they'll raise from this, yeah. and there's all sorts of questions um, around that, mm -hmm. but, I mean, I just think it's just weird that when it comes to the scale and it comes to this model, uh, the first option is to kind of, you know, basically here's venture capital, go at it, come up with what you want. Like, you know, not that there have been any questions around this, like Siemens, Downs, a lot of people in this mm -hmm. field have been playing with this, and, yeah. you know, there have been a lot of questions raised, and it seems like, you know, they're going for, here's how we're going to create the package. Yeah. Now, maybe it's a good package. I'm not saying it won't be, um, but I wonder what it will suffer from, but having no real social element. Yeah. I mean, because how is this different from a correspondent school online, then? Well, I mean, you know, playing devil's advocate here, I can think of no better thing for building out a piece of software than having 145,000 beta testers running it and going at it and trying to make it better. So if the end result mm -hmm. is that what this starts with is just one portion of it, they do have, I should mention, a discussion tab, which says coming soon. And I don't know if they've added it yet. I'll check. Mm -hmm. No, it says available soon. It says for now use Reddit and some other website, but available soon. And I assume that's going to be like a discussion thread similar to what Blackboard and something else would have. But maybe they will innovate in that space. I don't know. You know, it's yeah. certainly possible. but. Um, the idea interests me that, you know, this product as it's working right now is not feature complete and I'm hoping that what it ends up being at the end of the course is different than what it is now because it could be very interesting considering the scale that they're working on anyway. Yeah, and I, I want to believe to some degree that, you know, scale is ultimately what get, gets in the way mm -hmm. of the idea of the MOOC. I mean, for George Siemens, the idea is, you know, the scale is going to bring innovation like you've never seen it before. but you know, and I'm not saying, you know, that might be the case, but for me, that's, it seems to also lend itself to a model that's yeah. trying to be everything to everyone, and it's trying to kind of, you know, by the nature of the content, what we say AI is, yeah. you know, it kind of basically annihilates the relationships around the content. Right. Well, and that's why I want to believe that you can have it both ways. And I don't see that as progress at all. No, but I want to believe that you can have it both ways, and that's why I'm sort of rooting on this, even though it's backed by this company, even though that they're probably looking to make money off of it in some way. I want to believe it's possible because I want to believe that 150,000 people could take a digital storytelling class and, and build a real community around that. We've never seen anything on a scale like that, but these people exist. These people are interested in those kind of things, and if you could figure out a way to make it work to where you could build a community that had real connections from such a large group of people, I think it would be an incredibly powerful thing. Yeah. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting to me, and I mean, I think Noise Professor nails it in the, in the comments, scale causes one to drift. You mm -hmm. know, it, le it pushes towards the least common denominator. And, you know, I want to think that part of what the educational experience is and those relationships, mm -hmm. and then Noise Professor brought it up earlier in the chat too, like, you know, isn't Ed Roulette kind of what Twitter does? Yeah. And I think, like, when you have a kind of tuned-in community, mm. it doesn't necessarily matter how big it is. Yeah. I mean, and I think pretty massive innovation happened around DS-106, and it wasn't nearly the biggest MOOC, mm -hmm. but it's because there were people tuned in, like Grant Potter, Julia Ford, like all the people who we know have been playing around with this 
just doing great stuff and being committed. Twitter can facilitate those connections, but you almost need some middleman to point two people together. Otherwise, I don't know who you are. I never know how to contact you. So you almost mm -hmm. have to have some sort of system yeah. in place to be able to say, you should talk to this guy because. And so that's, that's sort of what the Ed Roulette type thing answers yeah. and what we're getting at is that, you know, Twitter is a perfect medium for those connections, but how do you, you make them in the first place? How do you make those connections? Okay, and before we, I, I, this is, I really am glad you brought this up because this is a good topic and mm -hmm. it's something I'm fascinated by and it's really cool that you're taking the MOOC, so yeah. kudos to you. Let me ask and let's end with a little bit about, you said they're using badges. Yeah. How are they using badges? Have you got one? Like, how are they building that into, into the infrastructure? Because, you know, badges are going to be all the rage, even for people who, you know, when they go to home at night and they talk to their family or whoever, they're like, like, this is the stupidest fucking thing. But at the same time, they realize that if I want any funding, I'm going to have to play this game. Yeah. You know, that's basically what it's become. So how are they using it? And they're, do you see anything there that's kind of like appealing to you? Well, that's what's interesting. They're not using them yet. There's a section on their profile that says badges. And as of right now, I don't have any. But there's no indicator on how I'm going to get a badge, whether that'll be through completing a quiz, through taking an exam, or whether, whether it'll be something completely different, whether I participate in the discussion forums might earn me a badge. I can imagine something right. like that. Uh, but as of right now, there's nothing on their website that indicates one way or another what they're going to do with that, or even if they're going to be using Mozilla's system. I don't believe that they would because it's still in beta, and my guess is if they were going to use Mozilla's open badge system, that that would have come, you know, yeah, but the they, they can throw badges in there and say, hey, we'll give you this badge and make it simple to do, and then go to Mozilla for the money after the fact. I mean, right. that's easy. To implement Well, you said we've used badges, but now we want to use yeah. your framework. Can yeah. we get a grant? So I don't know how they're going to use them yet, but I can imagine it would be somewhere along the lines, unless they're thinking completely differently, it would be something along the lines of you completed X number of quizzes, you get the quiz master badge, <laughs> or you, yeah. you, you helped out 10 people on the discussion forum, you get the helper badge, or something like that. That's right. So... You know, we'll see. I guess that's all I can say for now. We'll definitely have to do a follow-up episode we will. nearer towards the end of the semester, so to speak, when um, when this is coming we'll to a close be to, to see how it changes. See how we talked about their infrastructure now and how it's pretty much, you know, a pretty lame LMS that's going about yeah. sharing videos and giving you a quiz yeah. to what it becomes in 10 weeks. Because it's yeah. a 10-week class, right? Yeah. It ends the end of November or whatever? Mm-hmm. Okay. Somewhere around there. Great. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And thanks, everybody. Your chat was awesome. Yeah, definitely. Take and care. Hopefully we responded. All right, bye.